My name is Melissa Michaels and I am about 15 months um, with no evidence of disease in my body. I was diagnosed on March 17th in the year 2017 and what followed that immediately was a full hysterectomy and um, the removal of my omentum, the full-on onset of menopause and um, then six weeks after surgery was the beginning of chemotherapy. I had intraperitoneal chemotherapy and IV that completed 12 months ago. I want to talk about what happens or what happened for me around my sexuality and my capacity for physical intimacy through this journey. Of course, this is a completely relevant topic to every single person who goes through an ovarian or fallopian tube diagnosis and treatment and their intimate partners. It's not something that we talk about. We generally don't have time to talk about it until perhaps later in the journey. And I'm now later in the journey. When I um, first came home from surgery, I remember looking down at my body, my 50 six-year-old body and turning to my husband we had been married for seven years at that point and looking at him saying I get it if you don't want to make this journey that came out of who knows where but just the awareness of what it takes to be with a woman as she is transformed and changed so completely our, our identity changes, our body changes, our biochemistry changes, and, um, and, and we, we are just always the same people, thank goodness I came to realize, and yet our orientation towards ourselves as sexual and creative women change. So we had that moment, and of course he turned to me and said, that's not even a conversation. And I took that in very deeply. And as somebody who is a survivor of sexual abuse, to have that kind of benevolent love was a healing moment and a gift. And there were many along the course of my treatment because we come to understand that we are loved for ideally so much more than our bodies. But there is this physical peace. And when I finally came out of the chemotherapy and sort of took a look in the mirror and I was bald and little peach fuzz was coming in and it was gray and my whole identity was changed outwardly. I really realized that it was matched with something that had changed internally, but I didn't quite know what that all meant. And honestly, for me, I felt a bit like a nun. And I, I don't even come from the Christian traditions, but I felt something in me that was non-sexual and very committed to my spirituality because I had had such a revolutionary awakening through this near-death experience of surviving ovarian, progressed ovarian cancer. And it was awkward for me, and it has been awkward for me, both in my most intimate relationship, but also in how I experience myself and am perceived in the world. And of course, my husband has been patient and respectful and longing for reconnection with this person that he fell in love with on every level. And um, I've had to struggle with my own needs and vulnerabilities and pacing and the needs of the world around me, in particular my intimate partner. I even questioned my sexual identity, to be really honest. I didn't recognize myself. This extraordinary current of sexual, sensual, creative energy that I had worked throughout my adult life to heal and connect with and, and had done such a beautiful job coming from a childhood laced with sexual violence, I didn't recognize that who I was on the other side of this disease because that current wasn't really with me in the same way at all. I felt um, like I wanted to use that energy 
in a different way in the world. And, it, and I didn't understand how to sit in the tension of that. Slowly I have chosen to remember in my body my, my, the nourishment that comes from physical intimacy with a safe and trusted partner. And it's a very different experience. And there's grief at the loss of a part of my being that, had, that gave me pleasure. There's um, tenderness and the loss in the intimacy between a certain kind of intimacy between my partner and I. And what we're just beginning to realize is that there is a sweetness and humor in the humbling process of aging, which we're all doing. Mine just happened in sort of a rapid way. And um, as we lighten up around it, we realize that, of course, and, and we know this theoretically, but of course our sensuality can show up in meals and in play and in nature and how we go through all of our lives, even how we like deal with the bills. And that our sexuality is um, by nature always changing. And that if we don't fight it, but we take interest in it, we can befriend the new cycle and chapter of our lives. And it um, feels really important to give room to the grief around it and permission for the unknown and, and being lost on the journey. And um, remembering that we're just differently whole. And that um, there are many, many ways to be making love with that which we love in this life and to stay curious about what that means for each of us as individuals post-ovarian cancer. Thank you.